via what they now call natural childbirth. I assume you women are familiar with this. This procedure that was invented by a man named Lamaze, the Marquis de Lamaze, a <laughs> disciple of Dr. Joseph Mengele, ladies and gentlemen, a man who concluded that women could counteract the incredible pain of childbirth through rhythmic breathing. I think we all agree that breathing is a reasonable substitute for anesthesia. It's like asking a man to tolerate a vasectomy by hyperventilating. And Lamaze expected the husband to be there so that he could witness this festivity. And I didn't want to be there. This was remarkably painful for my wife. And there was nothing my presence could do to really relieve this pain. And so I didn't see why my evening should be ruined too. And I, I don't mean to sound insensitive. Believe me, it is very hard to see a woman you love suffer like this. And, and the husband's job as her coach is to basically listen to her beg for medication and just say no is what it amounts to. And this tends to make her cranky after 30 hours. They prepare couples by having them attend Lamaze classes. The highlight of which is the film of a baby being born. Perhaps the most gruesome flip I had ever seen, ladies and gentlemen. If you think Aliens was a gruesome movie, just wait till you see fetal attraction. Never, ever will you see anything even remotely approaching the gruesomeness of this. Oh. And, and I don't care how many movies they show you. There's, there's nothing that truly prepares you for the event because First of all, it's so intense, you forget what they teach you. For example, they taught us that when the baby comes out, as babies do, it will come out bluish. Babies come out bluish, and they taught us this, but I forgot, okay? I forgot. Well, you could imagine my shock. I look down at my boy finally emerging, and I think, a Smurf, I can't believe it! I, I wanted one Jewish, not bluish, God. Maybe I misspoke. And it never ends. The, you think the baby's out, you're done, but it, it's never... When the baby comes out, he does not come out alone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Along with the baby comes a potpourri of solids and liquids and gases and toxic waste and furniture, pencils, pens, things you haven't seen in years shoot out in a stream of lava. I couldn't even tell which was the baby. I said, clean everything. Don't throw anything away. I want everything labeled. Study. And, and some couples film this. They film the delivery. My wife and I filmed the conception, but uh, that is... I have newfound respect for what you women go through. I, I mean that, and I, I don't say to stroke the women. Although, if there are any women who do need stroking, please see me. It is entirely imbalanced. The man's job is to plant the seed, and he is done quickly. And particularly if you plant seeds as quickly as I do, thank you very much. <laughs> Remarkably quickly. Then the woman has to carry the baby. And when a woman is pregnant for the first time, she hears from all of her friends who have already had children, who are trying to help her, but who give her every possible horror story humanly imaginable. She hears everything. I was in labor five hours, 10 hours, two days, three weeks I was in labor. I, I had a, a breech birth, I had a sea birth, I had a rectal birth, rectal birth, I couldn't believe this. I, my kid was five pounds, 10 pounds, he, he walked out, he drove home, unbelievable. And, and as though carrying the baby and delivering is not hard enough, most women today are expected to nurse their children. It is in vogue. And this is not easy. Men think that this is the fulfillment of a woman's instinct. It is not easy, men. Believe me, the, when the woman nurses, her breasts uh, bloat. <laughs> they harden. And, and just even mentioning this excites me no end now that I think about it. It is not easy. It is not easy, and the child is not nibbling, ladies and gentlemen. He, he latches on pretty goddamn good, believe me. He latches on so he can't be dislodged with a crowbar once he works up at his team, because number one, he derives sustenance, and number two, instinctively, he knows it's not gonna get much better than this. So 
He hunkers down while the husband looks on with an envy and a bitterness uh, that what was once his, he now has to share with this little bastard who has no idea what's going on. A bond. And the kid is always thirsty, he's always thirsty, as you would be if it were served up for you in this fashion. <laughs> My wife, I, God bless her, what a, what a prodigious source of lactation. She was a <laughs> lactating machine, ladies and gentlemen. She could have breastfed Zimbabwe had they asked her to fight <laughs> world hunger in this fashion. For one woman to produce so much milk without eating hay was <laughs> unbelievable. We named our little boy Daniel. Great name, biblical name. Jewish people frequently give their baby a biblical name, such as my cousin Snake. <laughs> From the Old Testament, I don't know if you're familiar with that part. Not that Jewish people always use the Bible, because more frequently we will name the baby in honor of someone who has died a little before the baby is born, such as my other cousin who was named Grandpa. <laughs> Were we to have had a girl, my wife wanted to call her Sue, uh, which, which is a lovely name, but which for Jews is generally a verb. <laughs> I love being a daddy. I think one of the reasons I enjoy it so much is I'm uh, reasonably older. First time daddy, I'm, I'm, I'm in my late 30s. My, my very late 30s, I'm 43, so that's uh, <laughs> unbelievably late. I didn't get married till I was 39. That's a long time. And I know you're asking how such a spectacular hunk of granite such as myself <laughs> could have escaped marital ensnarlment for so many years, but I was not in fact spectacularly successful with women, and I know that's hard to believe by looking at me, but uh, go with me on this one, okay? <laughs> Just stretch your imagination, if you would. Some men have it. Yes, ladies, whatever it is, it's indefinable. It's like a chemical reaction that will excite women by their mere presence. And I had the antidote to whatever this reaction was. <laughs> I would induce restraint. I mean, my wife was really the first woman with whom I had lived. We lived in sin. The Bible says premarital sex is a sin. My wife says the way I did it, it was a crime. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> perhaps it was the protective headgear she objected to, but none of your business. She was the first woman with whom I had lived, and that's when you find out that we are in so many respects not meant to live together. We are so different. And of course, living together is a trade-off. On one hand, you lose some freedom, but on the other hand, fellas, you get someone who is willing to list for you all of your faults, and I think we certainly appreciate that. <laughs> Women are more clean. Women are more civilized. They, they are less able to coexist with microorganisms as they collect on porcelain, where as men need for these microbes to collect until they become life-threatening before they think anything needs to be done. <laughs> Women are more civilized. My wife, when we began living together, actually set up a hamper for laundry. <laughs> Which only made the laundry harder to get at in an emergency. I, I thought, and I'm sure you guys know what I'm